Now, around 3 million people in the UK have kidney disease, with up to a million undiagnosed. But I've certainly never been to a restaurant that provided meals for people with the condition. But a Southampton doctor has persuaded a huge restaurant chain to make just such a menu. Joining me now is Dr Arvid Nagra, a consultant nephrologist at Southampton Children's Hospital, who managed to get Jamie's Italian to design a meal for those with kidney problems. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank so you for inviting me. just tell me a bit about what why it is that people that have kidney problems need a specific diet or need to watch out for their diet. Well, really your kidneys are um I mean, and I apologise if you already know this and I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but your kidneys are like big washing machines. You have two, usually the size of your fist, in the back of your, just in the back over there. And what they're doing is they're constantly filtering your blood. So all your blood in your body goes through your kidneys twice every half hour. Well, wow. Twice, <laughs> twice in an hour. So, okay. you know, so that's 48 times in a day. And uh, what they do is they filter, so they make sure they get rid of the waste and the water that you don't need, but also make sure that they um, stabilise or um, balance the salt salts in your body as well, amongst lots of other things. So when, you, when your kidneys aren't working very well, they're unable to excrete some of these salts. And sometimes um, some of the other salts are built up and you lose other salts. So it's just about making sure you've had the right diet so your kidneys don't have to work too hard and you don't get those toxins building up in your body. So what kind of things should you and shouldn't you eat then if you have a problem with kidneys? Well, well interestingly, it really depends on the type of kidney, kidney problems you have. So often when your kidneys are failing, sometimes if you have high blood pressure problems, you need to cut down on salt. So, and also, if you're depending on what degree of kidney failure you have or kidney impairment you have, sometimes it's re reducing your protein content and there's certain salts and minerals and phosphate is one of the salts that often children struggle with and other patients struggle with as well with kidney impairment. So we're talking not just about kind of regular table salt, but a kind of a, a whole variety of yeah, other salts and yeah. things that we kind of aren't necessarily yes. so aware of. What kind of, is there like specific foods that might have a lot of phosphate or? Well, you have lots of phosphate in cheese, in milk, um, right. in ice cream, which kids love, which obviously is oh, a no. milk-based one, <laughs> some meats as well and nuts. So there's, and there's lots of phosphates actually, hidden phosphates in preservatives now. So, um, whereas before preservatives weren't that much of an issue, but now they are becoming more of an issue. Right, okay. And so you went about trying to persuade a chain of restaurants to kind of make a menu that might be friendly to this. Tell me all about it. Yeah, so, um, well, we were thinking we wanted to raise awareness for World Kidney Day, which, on, which was last week on the 10th of March. And with, with one of our parents who had links in with Jamie Oliver's or knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody <laughs> and her daughter's got kidney disease, we thought, why don't we use Jamie Oliver's? Why don't we ask Jamie Oliver's if they would be prepared to provide a meal for our patients uh, to help raise awareness? And we didn't have to persuade them. They were saying, wow, um, had a lot of requests from cardiologists, but never from a nephrologist because kidneys just aren't big on people's radar. And they've been incredibly helpful. And our dietitian spoke to their nutritionist and they came up with a couple of menus for Jamie Oliver's in, in Portsmouth, Gun Wharf Keys. And Ben, the manager there, was fantastically supportive, as was the rest of Jamie Oliver's Italian restaurant team. They were brilliant, I think. So what was in, what was on the menu then and how was it kind of different to, you know, you, you might have kind of might imagine would be a general Italian meal that you might find? Well, you'll be surprised. It's just about um, how you mix the, the ingredients up that makes a difference. So our dietitian spoke to um, Arisha O'Kennedy, who's one of the top nutritionists at Jamie Oliver Central Office, and gave quantities of, we thought we'd keep it simple in the first instance, you know, just do this as a trial. And we had a short time period in which to do it. So we just gave phosphate as the salt that we would try and restrict. Not all the other restrictions, because patients can often be on a number of restrictions. But we thought phosphate was one of the commonest ones. So that's what they did. And they did a delicious um, hot smoked salmon, hot smoked salmon salad, and also a lovely duck. Can't complain, really. And it was fantastic. That sounds patients delicious. Patients loved it. Yeah. Loved it. So what happened at the event? You got patients to kind of go down to the restaurant and try it Yeah, then. so what we did was we only had about four to six weeks. And I think in four to six weeks, we've, you know, everybody's worked together and pulled it out of the yeah. bag. We spoke to parents, raised awareness, and we had 120 to 140 people there came, tried the meal. We had lots of fun. We also had um, some gaming in the corners. We had some students from Winchester College come, and uh, we developed a game to empower patients about learning about good nutrition and hydration in the corner. So the kids were trying that out and giving us feedback about that. We had a raffle and the wonderful Coldplay donated um, tickets to help raise awareness. And one of our 16 year old patients um, won Coldplay tickets, you know, guest list places for Coldplay and the concert 
just happens to be on his birthday. I mean, you couldn't ask for <laughs> that. Funny. That's just fabulous. And it was just a, just going around, parents meeting each other, and it was just lovely, a vibrant party atmosphere. Yeah. And people were surprised, and the restaurant were fantastic. And we had awareness stickers all over, even in the loos of Jamie Oliver. <laughs> and we bumped into a customer and said, what do you think? They go, well, we didn't know. This is fantastic. And I will name check the customer because it was Laura Varecchia. And she said, please, would you call me a celebrity? Because we tweeted her all over. <laughs> so it was fantastic. And so obviously that sounds like a great event. And it was for kind of Kidney Awareness Day. Mm. But what next? Because I can't imagine that every restaurant out there is going to be suddenly adopting kind of kidney friendly menus right away. What's kind of the next step? I think it's just really raising awareness to show it can be done. And um, I think Jamie Oliver's has been very good actually because they do actually say nut allergy gluten free allergy and lots of places mm. say that but not many say about phosphate meals and it's just trying to raise awareness and just keep um if we, when you raise awareness and hopefully other restaurants will come on board as well and i certainly know that there have been interest in other restaurants in the past where they've provided um a low phosphate meal as a one-off but we just need to have a look and um we're chatting to jamie oliver to see if we can do something for next year as well to help raise awareness and i think and one of the things that's been great, you know, with the low sugar, with the sugar tax that's come out recently is that we know that obesity is, um, is a significant risk factor for kidney disease. So we know, you know, you know that one in four children is either overweight or obese when they start nursery. And that's one in three by the time they go to secondary school. And with obesity, you get increases in diabetes and heart disease and also high blood pressure, which we know are um, significant contributors to kidney disease. And obesity on its own is also known to reduce um, kidney function. So if we can fight that, that will actually also have an impact on kidney disease in the future. So we're hoping that possibly, well, we're chatting to Jamie Oliver's Italians to see, could we do something for next year and hopefully get low phosphate menus, get, sorry, low phosphate recipes on, the, um, on their um, menus in the future. Meals, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, it's, you know, this is all, all lives. This is what we expect. So, yeah. Dr. Nagra, thank you so much for coming in. Well done and good luck for next Ooh, year. And can I Ooh, just yes. say one final thing okay. is that, um, just one thing is there, is, there are seven and a half thousand people waiting for a transplant of some sort on the organ donation list. Five and a half thousand of those are waiting for a kidney. So all I would say is for people, if you can consider, please think about donating your organs because it would make a huge difference to people nationally and do you mean alive UK. people or, or well, when we die? Well, live people as well, yes. <laughs> there are altru altruistic donors and yeah. there's been 500, well, 400 and something mm. in the last 10 years. And, uh, but there were 94 altruistic donors last year. And with the 94 altruistic donors, because you could get into a chain, there were 127 kidney transplants. So those 94 donors helped save um, 127 patients because it's lifelong treatment and it improve their life dramatically. I recently had a 12 year old that's just had a kidney transplant and he's come back, he says, I feel fantastic. He goes, it's like I've had flu for the last five years. And he goes, having my kidney transplant the day after I felt fantastic and I can eat and drink. And it really is life changing for these children mm. and adults as well. Thank so you thank very you. much. Thank you.